babies are actually smarter than us in some ways, which I think is a really non-intuitive idea. Right. So it's something that's cool to know, it's a cool fact to bring up at a party, like yeah. that baby is better at that than you are. <laughs> Hi, I'm here today with my good friend and colleague, Ms. Amanda Hodell. Hi. Uh, she is currently a graduate student uh, in my former research lab, and she's here today to talk a little bit about her research, uh, which deals primarily with little, little ones, little, little, little ones. Tell us a little bit about kind of generally what you do. So one of the things that I'm really interested in understanding more about is how do differences in children's early life experiences affect the way the brain develops long term, um, brain structure, brain function, and actually just the way that we think in our everyday lives as well. So I know another one of the things that you are pretty passionate about is studying little babies. Baby. Uh, yay, baby, re <laughs> baby research. Yes. So for people out there who don't know how this all works, how do scientists figure out what babies are thinking? So you think about you have this little baby and you're watching them, what can they actually tell us about what's going on in their head? It's a very <laughs> difficult question, especially if we're looking at a newborn. If you've had experience with newborns, they can't even see that well. Right. I love newborns, <laughs> I'm not picking on them. Um, and they definitely can't coordinate their actions, so they're not gonna be able to be like, hey, I would like this toy, let me grab it from you. Right. How could we ever figure out what they're thinking in their head? Mm -hmm. um, and so fortunately, scientists have come up with pretty cool techniques for being able to reliably study what our baby is thinking. Well, one of the things that we can rely on is even newborns, even though they can't see very well, like to look at things. So a lot of the research that we do on infant cognition, on what infants think and infants understand, builds on the fact that infants like to look at different things. Okay. And so there's a couple of different experimental techniques that we can use that tell us about what babies think are interesting and what they can remember. Mm -hmm. um, so one example is what's called a habituation task okay. or a habituation paradigm. Um, so in a habituation task, what we do is we sit a baby down and on a large video monitor, we can show them pictures mm -hmm. of something. Mm -hmm. um, and we can show them the same picture. I could show them a picture of a cat over and over and over again. Uh -huh. And in general, like an adult, once a baby has seen something several times, they will get bored with it and they will start to look away. And so that's what habituation actually refers to, this idea that as a baby becomes familiar with something, they'll habituate to it, they'll get bored with it. Then we can use this paradigm to do something kind of nifty. We can test to see if the baby actually remembers that thing that we showed them at the start and if they can notice that it's different from something else. So if I habituate a baby to a bunch of pictures of cats, then we take a little break and then I show him a paired picture, a picture of a cat and a picture of a dog. What is he gonna look at? What is he gonna spend more time looking at? If I think that he remembers those cat pictures and he was bored with them, he shouldn't wanna look at a new cat. That's familiar to him, it's old news, it's not interesting. So if he spends more time then paying attention to the dog, I would have some idea that, oh, he recognizes that those two pictures are different mm -hmm. and he's formed some type of memory mm -hmm. of that one picture. Yeah. Um, another way that we can ask little babies about what they know has to do with pairing two pictures. I and mean, it's called a visual preference paradigm. We can measure things like what are babies more interested in looking at? For example, if we want to know, do newborn infants like looking at pictures of human faces? Okay. I can show a newborn infant a picture of a human face um, and a picture of a circle that has like a grid inside of it instead. And I can just see by what they're looking at, what does it seem like they prefer to look at the most? Mm -hmm. And that'll give us some idea about what is a baby innately interested in? What they might have, what they might have a biological just kind of interest in from when they're born. And isn't there some research out there that babies are sort of predisposed to look for faces in things, that that's sort of a, 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 maybe not innate, but something they learn very, very early, that faces are a good thing to look at. Yeah, so humans are face experts, so even little babies tend to prefer to look at things that look like faces. So mm -hmm. they like looking at actual photos of human faces, for example. We can trick them though, so it's not faces specifically that they like, they'll also look at things that look kind of like faces. So if I take, you know, a circle and I put some features in it that should look like a face, if I put some eyes and they're over to the side or a mouth that's like upside down, a newborn will probably like to look at that too. Uh -huh. Babies know from early on that there's something special about faces and that they should yeah. be paying attention to them. They will teach them important things. That's pretty cool. It is. It's really <laughs> neat. One of the other things about faces that was one of my, my favorite studies to learn about um, is, is the monkey faces. Yeah. <laughs> Babies are actually smarter than us in some ways, which I think is a really non-intuitive idea. 
idea. Right. So it's something that's cool to know. It's a cool fact to bring up at a party. Like that yeah. baby is better at that than you are. <laughs> so in this really classic study, um, what they did is they habituated adults. We mm -hmm. just talked about habituation. They habituated adults and they habituated babies to pictures of different types of faces. Right. Um, so for example, I, if I'm habituated to monkey faces, I'm going to see an example of a monkey face mm -hmm. over and over again. And then they paired two monkey faces next to each other, one that I would have seen before and one that I would not, and they tried to see if I could tell that the two were different. Mm -hmm. If I remembered that one I had seen a bunch of times, I should be more willing and interested to look at the new one. Mm -hmm. There's a funny thing that happens with monkey faces. So as an adult, if you ever try to tell two monkeys apart at the zoo by their face, <laughs> you might notice that you're kind of bad at it and that's really difficult. Whereas if I walk around at the shopping mall, people's faces look real different to me and I don't have any problem in general telling two people's faces apart. Right. So that's how adults do in this type of experiment. Mm -hmm. However, if we do this experiment with really little babies, with six month olds, for example, six month olds are equally good at telling people's faces apart from each mm -hmm. other as they are at telling two different monkeys' faces apart from what? each other. So they, so cool. I know, so they can do the monkey faces. Apparently they they know which monkey is which if you take them to the zoo, whereas I have no clue. <laughs> and interestingly, we start to lose that ability as we get older. So when we're around nine months or so, that's when babies start to lose the ability to tell two different monkeys apart. Mm -hmm. um, so why might that be? If you think about, well, what do I have to do to be a successful human in my everyday world? It's pretty important for me to be able to tell my mom and my dad and my brother and sisters and other humans apart from each other. Not so much for the monkeys. I'm right. not spending a lot of time hanging out with the monkeys. So what will happen is I'll lose the ability to tell faces apart that aren't important to my success in my everyday environment. That's also a part of neural pruning, which I've talked about before, so you should check that out. Exactly. So what we think is happening is we have all these extra connections in our brain, which we're supporting multiple different skills, and then we got rid of the set that weren't necessary and right. kept the ones that were the most important to tell the human faces apart. And we actually know that this is about experience because they've done some really cool follow-ups to the study. Have you heard about these? I don't know if I have. So who do you think, for example, is good at telling different pictures of cows apart? I suspect cows would be good at that. Cows will be good at it. <laughs> so are farmers. Oh yeah, that would make sense. So are farmers. So if you're an adult, yep. and if you have a lot of experience with telling other different types of yep. faces apart, <laughs> like, cows, like cows, um, then you're a cow expert. You do really <laughs> well at them. What people are going to be good at telling monkey faces apart? Zookeepers. Zookeepers, exactly. So this is all something about how our experience works. So our brain is super smart. It tunes into what experiences we need. Mm -hmm. um, and it gets rid of the information that doesn't help us in our day-to-day -day life. So one of the other really cool ways that um, infants are better at things than adults are is, uh, is demonstrated in this language experiment um, where you present infants with different speech sounds, right? From different languages. Yep. And, uh, and they can actually discern it a little bit better, right? So again, babies are really, really smart. And this mm -hmm. study is a great example of how smart the, even the, you know, the young infant's brain is um, and how ready it is to learn from whatever is going on around it in the environment. So Sarah was talking about speech sounds. Phonemes are the units of sound in different language systems. And so what they did in this study is they tested young infants' ability to discriminate or tell the difference between different speech sounds. Mm -hmm. Speech sounds that they're hearing in their everyday language, their language at home. In this case, it was English for most of the infants. Um, and speech sounds that are present in different languages mm -hmm. and mean something in a different language that are not actually present in English. Right. Um, and so they were using different speech sound contrasts that are present in Hindi mm -hmm. and they're ones that I can't hear the difference between so I can't speak them as an example <laughs> for you unfortunately <laughs> um, and so what they found with this study is they found that young infants are actually kind of universal language learners mm -hmm. so they are able to hear the difference between all the speech sounds that are possible in any language of the world even if they haven't heard it before so they're ready to go. It's amazing. They're ready to go. They're ready for you to speak English to them. They're ready for you to speak Spanish, German, whatever language. They're ready to learn it. Mm -hmm. um, and that ability is something that goes away as we get older. So once infants get to be in the six to nine month or so age range, they start to lose the ability first to be able to tell apart differences in vowels that aren't meaningful in their language. And then later they lose the ability to be able to tell apart differences in consonants that aren't meaningful in their language. And that's not necessarily a bad thing that we're losing the ability to tell sounds part that don't matter in our language. Um, instead, it means we actually get better at paying attention to the meaningful sounds in our own language. And so that's how we know that infants are starting
starting to specialize. They're starting to tune in. Mm -hmm. They're starting to listen just for the things that matter, for the language that's going on around them in their home environment. Well, thank you so much for sharing your wealth of wisdom with us today. We learned <laughs> lots of cool things about how babies are better at some stuff than so smart. than adults are. So yeah, at your next your next cocktail party, throw that out as a fact <laughs> that you now learned. Thanks so much for sharing yeah. your time with us Thanks today. Thanks for having me. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.